Another year, another closet to clean. Come on now. Okay, greetings loved ones and welcome to my chaotic closet here in Virginia. There's a lot going on, all right? We got toad hat, mushroom hat behind me. We got a shark hat on top of a witch's hat. We got costumes, cloaks, regular everyday wear, dresses, my shoes, my beanies, and then there's an entire bed of stuff I probably won't clean out in this video, but I am going to be doing my first spring cleaning video of this season. I assume that there will be more. I'm going to be deep cleaning my closet today to list clothes on my Depop, which will be linked down below. I'm just gonna say now, the day that this video is going up, those clothes will not be listed on Depop, all right? I'm expecting maybe like a week turnaround time to start seeing some of those clothes listed on there because the day that this video is going up is my 26th birthday. So in honor of that, I'm going to be cleaning out my closet, but also doing my annual lessons learned video which is this year 26 lessons I've learned at 26 so I have all of my lessons here on a little iPhone tripod and then I'm just gonna be trying stuff on saying yes no maybe so and I'm so excited it's spring cleaning season I have been putting this off for so long because when we moved from Oregon to Virginia to this temporary house which is why my clothes are on these movable clothing racks um, because this is a really old 1800s farmhouse there's not a lot of closet space so I basically converted this little room into my walk-in closet which has been a major slay but also when we were moving obviously I downsized a little bit and there is already a pile of clothes in our guest room that I haven't listed but I'm gonna add to the pile in this video but the reason I'm really doing this is because I am currently the heaviest I've ever weighed so a lot of my clothes just don't fit me anymore and I'm not saying that to be like oh boohoo woe is me like it's a bad thing I'm just saying like that's a fact that my body has changed in some of these clothes no longer serve my current body. So if you have clothes in your closet that don't serve your current body, then this is your inspiration to do exactly what I'm gonna do today. But without further ado, let's get into the first lesson of this video, which actually comes from my daily joy journal, which I filled out most of these journal prompts in 2022. This is by Jennifer Loudon. So I really have her to thank for this lesson. A lot of the lessons in this video are gonna be stuff that I learned from books, podcasts, shows, those types of things that really resonate with my soul, you know, and they stuck with me, so I'm gonna make them stick with you. But lesson number one is choose growth, not self-improvement. And I know that kind of sounds weird when you first hear it, so let me expand, or allow Jennifer to expand. And she says, self-improvement is often based on the belief that something in you needs fixing. If only you could change your blank, eating habits, bank balance, etc., then you'd finally be blank happy, lovable, etc. Growth, on the other hand, is rooted in knowing that you are, at your core, good. This core goodness is unchangeable. It cannot be sullied or improved on, and it serves as a springboard for seeking new freedoms and enjoyment. Can you feel the difference? Can you? And with that, let's go into the first section, okay? I know you can't really see it, but this is my shorts and skirts section. And I have some new pieces here, this pair of checkered shorts I showed you in my last vlog, keeping those. These, honestly, I think I might need to try on because the waist on slimmer, okay? So we're gonna try those on. These are like elastic waistband shorts, both of these. So they work with my changing body. This is my cute little mini skirt, keeping her. And I'm also gonna keep this like suede skirt that has scalloped edges that I thrifted. Pretty much every piece in here is thrifted unless I say otherwise. And the other two skirts, I'm gonna take out this one and leave my long cashmere skirt that I love. This might need to be listed on Depop. I'll be honest, I don't remember the last time I wore this. But let me try on these two pieces and we'll see how they fit while well, I'm getting into these shorts. I'm gonna read lesson number two, which is actually from a podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts of all time, which is Lovers and Friends with Shan Boudram. You need to listen, okay? I'm dropping my pants. I'll definitely try to find this episode and link it down below, but it was basically about, yeah, these are tight. It was about changing in relationships. So my interpretation of what I learned from that podcast was changing in a relationship isn't always bad. I'm interested in growing and evolving with my partner and not remaining stagnant, but the difference there is building yourself versus losing yourself. So when people talk about, oh, you changed up since you got into a relationship, you're different now. It's like, did they lose themselves 
in this relationship? Are they absorbed by another human being? Or are they building themselves with this person and discovering things about themselves that they didn't even know and it's a healthy thing for them to be building themselves? At this point in our lives, we all know people who are in relationships where you're kind of like, hmm, change it for the better or change it for the worse. Building versus losing. I think we should look at it as that. And obviously, if you're concerned that somebody's losing themselves in a relationship, you should say something to them. But if they're building themselves, then you're like, hmm, okay, slay. Anyway, these shorts are really, really tight. That's why I said waist on thinner, because my period bloat that I'm dealing with right now is really being squeezed by these shorts. But I got them because they remind me of my Grammy in Florida, who plays golf and wears patterned floral shorts. And I really like these shorts. I kind of want to keep them. How about I keep them for this spring and summer? If I don't get enough wear out of them this summer, I get rid of them in the fall. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. And you know with the maybe pile or the stuff that I need to be reminded of, like hey you almost got rid of that, I'm actually gonna put it in a separate section of my closet so I remember wear this or you're going to need to get rid of it, all right? So we're not just gonna put it back. That's a little tip for you. Hey chicken tits. What's up? So Rue told me a little secret today. What? She's really insecure about it. I'm sure you want to know. Yeah. She has a uneven number of nipples. <laughs> On one side, the and the other. Side. Yeah, you can see it. One of her nipples is in between the other two nipples, and she's missing one. Wow. Well, Rue. you'll get through it, Rue. You're missing a nipple. Oh, God. Yeah, I gotta get rid of this skirt. Y'all seeing this? <laughs> that was so painful to put on. Okay, I'm getting rid of this skirt for sure. Lesson number three is vulnerability should never be expected, held as a trophy, or weaponized. Okay, this is a revolutionary lesson that I learned this past year because I'm an incredibly honest person. Just in my life, in my relationships with everybody, I'm so honest, I wanna share all the things, but you can't expect that from everybody, you know? And you can't force somebody, especially somebody that you love and that you're close to, like, hey, I need to know this from you because it'll make me feel closer to you. Cause that's straight up manipulation. And this is something that also was covered in a Lovers and Friends podcast episode. The title of it was, Do We Really Want Vulnerable Men? And Shan had on a bunch of men who talked about the ways that in their relationships, women have weaponized vulnerability against them and been like, I need to know X, Y, and Z about your childhood before I can get further in this relationship with you, which I understand, you know, we want honesty, but also at the same time, it's like, are you using it against this person and forcing them to give you information about themselves that they might not be mentally ready to give yet? I think that that's a very very, very important to understand when it comes to allowing people to open up to you rather than making them open up. All right, I gotta find a pair of pants to wear if I'm going to start trying on tops here. If I have one layer off, I gotta have the other layer on. But for sure, that's one of my favorite lessons I learned in the past year. Lesson number four is take pictures of your body because you love it, not because you wanna judge it, which has been hard for me with uh, taking progress photos. I understand, like, sometimes you wanna jump off point if you're starting a you know journey with your fitness where you want to see how you looked from the start and that's okay to do that but if you're gonna sit there and just pick apart your body judge it and it's toxic for you it's not a healthy thing it's toxic for you to be doing that then don't freaking do it okay now I just take photos of my body because I freaking love it and I'm like slay yes you look really good in this I actually like this top the way that it is but I would have to wear it with something underneath it because lord knows once I take this off it would be all downhill from there but actually how this top is supposed to go I made this shirt okay and it wasn't some of my best work I'll show you the matching pants that go with it but in a so drunk video I made this matching top and bottom and I'll be honest with you I've worn them one time since I'm just kind of scared of them because they're not my regular cut and I'll show you why well first of all I'm like scared to back up I'm wearing like a period thong right now and they're honestly one size too small too I already exchanged them for a bigger size see this is the problem with having a changing body in your mid-20s it's like I thought that I was one size in underwear ordered that size was like nope gotta size up the bigger size came and I was like oh shit I gotta size up again and then I never did because I didn't want to pay for the shipping <laughs> and the reason why I never wear these pants is because it shows way too much of my belly and I don't want to show this much of my 
belly in pants. I love a high-waisted moment. I'm just not a low-rise girly when it comes to pants. I think a lot of us can relate to that. But um, if you want this set, look on my Depop because I think I'm gonna sell it. Handmade by Meg. <laughs> Yep. I actually, should I keep the top? No, no, I'm not keeping the top. Lesson number five is from Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, which is a shocking title, but it was an amazing book, one of my favorites that I read in 2022. And she wrote in it, if the truth ends a relationship, then it's probably a relationship that needed to end, period. I found two that I think I wanna get rid of, so let's start trying these on and get into lesson number six, which is also a quote from a book from Stephanie Dandler. I read a book called Bittersweet. And this was one of my favorite quotes in it. Without an ability to see yourself, you cannot protect yourself. So I understand this in a way of self-awareness. If you don't have self-awareness of the state of life that you're in, you can't zoom out and see yourself in maybe a toxic pattern or behavior that you're just sitting in with no ability or no skills to see where you might be wrong, see your own faults and see that you can't protect yourself from making that mistake again. So it's important to kind of have that hindsight 2020, but I understand that it's hard to do in the moment. Anyway, I really think it's time to get rid of this. I tried to give it to my sister for a season so that she could enjoy it, but it's like a gold cute moment. Like I love it, it's metallic. I wore it on New Year's Eve this year, but that's the only time I ever even consider wearing this. For for some reason, it's just not it. I have to wear it with no bra and I can just never figure out like a good pant to wear with it. It just never makes sense. So I'm gonna list this one. Spaghetti straps, they're not for me. I got too big of girls to uh, support a spaghetti strap moment with no bra. I can see that now in my mid twenties, you know. This top I also thrifted and I've worn it a couple times and been like, all right, she's cute, she's cute. But I think the last time that I filmed a closet clean out, I put this top on and I said that I was going to crop it and then I never did. Or maybe it was when I first hauled this top, showed it in a haul. I don't know, but look at it. It's like kind of a peplum moment. It kind of reminds me of something that I would have worn in like elementary school. And let me be honest, a lot of my clothes are that. I have a very young taste in clothes and my color palette is super like playful and I love that, I've embraced that. But this top, it just doesn't really make that much sense to me. I just don't get that much wear out of it because I can never make sense of it. Sometimes I tuck it into stuff and then I'm like, mm, I like it. And then other times I wear it like over I only had one pair of white pants and I actually ended up getting rid of them and now that those pants are gone I mean hey why are we holding on to this the next lesson is actually a movie quote from the gentleman King Matthew McConaughey said this one y'all know I love him or do you I don't know but this lesson is doubt causes chaos in one's own demise and how I interpret that lesson is basically don't act out of fear don't make big decisions out of doubt or judgments out of doubt just because you haven't seen what's on the other side yet. I gotta get rid of this one, I think, but I'm gonna try it on. Oh, this next lesson is so good. Number eight, you gotta realize the difference between excuse me and I'm sorry. And I'm saying this to myself. When I'm at the grocery store and somebody comes out of an aisle and they're trying to whip their cart next to me and I'm in the way, I'm like, I'm sorry. Why am I apologizing to that person? It's just the nature of the grocery store. Everybody's got a cart, everybody's using it and whipping it around for the most part. So I just need to say, oh, excuse me. It's kind of like the same thing of when you're late and you want to say to somebody, thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for your patience rather than I'm so sorry I was so late. It's like we're not gonna act out of boohoo woe is me. We're gonna say excuse me or thank you. You know it's just those subtle switches in language that just make you more confident and less down on yourself. Because <laughs> I'm very much the other type of person to be like sorry sorry and I'm like why am I at the grocery store turn in every corner apologizing to everybody. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, this top, I kind of liked it a lot when I got it. And then I wore it on top of a dress recently and I just fucking hated it. I was like, why did I buy this? Why does it have like sequins and sparkles? And I just feel like this belonged in limited two back in the day and it should have stayed there. You know, this is something I would have worn a little shrug to the seventh grade dance or worn to Libby Lou Who for somebody's birthday party, since I never had my birthday party there. <laughs> Lifelong dream though, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I don't think that this is worth holding on to anymore. Um, it's from Charlotte Russe, 
and I found it at the thrift store. And I thought, you know, that'll be good for a season. And it was. I mean, I've slayed some looks in that top, believe it or not, but no longer. Let's get into the next one. Busy is a blessing, but it's not glamorous. I'm just the type of person who likes to schedule myself, likes to have a to-do list for the day, and I have a way to make that attainable with my current work-life balance, which I'll get into. I like having a lot of social plans. I like having a lot on my work calendar. I like being able to meet deadlines and feel as though I'm satisfying those goals for myself but also at the same time it's not as like glamorous as people make it out to be where it's like oh my god she's living this whole scheduled life and it's so wonderful and amazing I guess what I'm saying is I'm only able to do that because I factor in rest which is really a big priority for me and that leads me to lesson number 10 which is work-life balance is one of the biggest ways to prioritize your peace basically my current structure is this I work and work out Monday through Friday pretty much. Well, I also work out on Saturdays, but I have like a very specific stick to my workout classes, come back, shower, do my little laptop club, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I stream on Twitch at night. That's like my general schedule with some things thrown in. But I always, always prioritize hanging out with friends on the weekends unless I feel like my social battery is drained and I cannot do that on the weekend and I need to just rest on the weekend but I'll always block out when I'm going to be out of office even if it's just for like a weekend wedding because I want my work to be able to see my calendar and be like okay she might be a little bit more tired on Monday maybe we don't put a deadline on Monday for coming back you know and it's like if you have that balance you have this all blocked out even if you're not like presenting it to somebody else like I'm saying for my management but if you're just doing it for yourself I mean it's an amazing thing to see to be like okay well I've scheduled this out enough to know that if I'm going out of town for this weekend I need to start prepping ahead of time because I've already scheduled my play and now I gotta work and make sure that I'm making things in this case like making videos or making content for you before I go and do that thing anyway how do we feel about this I got this shirt for a Tarzan and Jane costume I was Jane and this was like my field outfit you know when she first arrived and before she met Tarzan sometimes I just feel like I don't wear this enough you know what no I'm keeping it and you know what I'm gonna get rid of instead is actually this one because this one's more thin more colorful and it's harder to match to things and this one I'm actually very attached to so I'm gonna get rid of this one instead I normally wear this bowling it's my bowling shirt Okay, sorry, I turned off the camera for a second to really drill into my head. You gotta figure out what the hell you're doing here. Okay, because I passed over a lot of things while I was talking about a previous lesson, and I think that I'm gonna get rid of this. Somebody sent this to me that they thrifted for me, and they sent it to my P.O. box when I still had one open, which is very nice of them. And I did get some wear out of it. I actually would wear it with, you know, pants like this, but I just feel like the fit and structure of this top is not normally what I pick up or go to so I'm going to list this one. And now let's get into lesson number 11, which is it's okay to have friends in different categories, okay? You got your work friends. For me, I have my workout friends. I have my online friends. And then I have like my IRL friends. We got Finley's friends, um, girlfriends of Finley's friends. People who I genuinely, all these people in my life, I'm like, yeah, I like you. I care about you. I don't expect every single category of person, my Zoom friends for example to reach the place where it's like a relationship that I've had with somebody since I was like you know 14 years old you know they just don't know me like that and that's fine and I don't think that when it comes to making friends you should necessarily be going into everything being like I'm looking for a best freaking friend dude because it's like maybe you have a friend who you just get coffee with and you just kind of catch up every now and again and you don't need to like share all of your life stories and your traumas and all these things and put it out all onto the table I just think it's good to become comfortable with the idea that not everybody is going to be your best friend. And I don't want to sound fucked up when I say that, I just mean you're gonna have a lot of friends in your life who serve different purposes. Every time I try to make myself get rid of a flannel, I actually regret it. I got rid of a flannel a while ago in one of these videos and I regret it, so I'm not gonna do that today. But if I had to get rid of one skirt, it would be this pesky bugger right here. Let's put it on so you can see what I'm talking about. And while I'm putting this on, let's talk about lesson number 12. Not every boundary needs to be talked about. There can be some things that you just keep for yourself and you really don't need to tell somebody all the time that you're not going to share certain aspects of your life with them anymore because that can actually be upsetting to some people, you know? And so maybe in your head you're just like, this boundary's for me. 
I'm not going to share certain aspects of my work life with my grandma anymore. I'm not saying that that's my case, I'm just saying for an example. If your grandma doesn't receive that information so well when you talk about your work, maybe just in your head you're like, just not going to cover that anymore. But you don't need to sit her down and be like, grandma, I'm not talking to you about my work anymore. I'm just not doing it, okay? That's my boundary. I think that there's ways to kind of socially maneuver and move around things rather than always laying it all out on the table. Anyway, this is why this skirt is probably gonna need to be gotten rid of. I've worn this to a couple Renaissance fairs. I've had this for years. I got this from Wild Fox Couture back in the day at a sample sale. And the reason that I kind of want to get rid of it is because it's pretty much completely see-through. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, my donkus is donkin. And it's really hard when I'm not wearing nude undies to wear this out or find something to wear it with. It's just a complicated skirt. So I'm gonna let somebody else take on this skirt, okay? Maybe you like the see-through look and you want to take this off my hands. It's time for pants. So I'm gonna try on these pinky poos because if I remember correctly, they really, really hug the waist. It's also the halfway point in these lessons. So lesson number 13 is genuinely embracing change revolutionized my life. I used to be somebody who would say things like this. I'm just not good with change. Yep, you know it just takes me a while to adjust. Or, you know, I just miss how it used to be. But also at the same time, it's like, life is gonna change. Things are gonna happen. Your clothes are gonna change. Your body's gonna change. And embracing that and moving along with the tide is better for everybody. But moving is a huge change and saying bye to old friends is a huge change. And I know that a lot of people out there are like me where it's just like damn I don't know if I'm ready for that and I genuinely thought that for so long but I just told myself I'm ready for anything because I'm with my little honey my husband and we can take on anything okay and he's got me I think that that's also what's really helped me is realizing that I'm loved and protected and he's got me he gets me settled wherever we are because Finley is very good with change he'll just be like well this is happening when we were evacuated from the wildfires well this is happening he will remain cool calm and collected figure everything out whereas I'm like crying in the front seat you know and being like what's happening like it's changing all so fast and it does change really fast but sometimes you just gotta get in the passenger seat buckle yourself in and be like all right it's changing but I'm along for the drive you know what I mean anyway I've been modeling these too too tight pants for too long but you can see why I need to get rid of these it's just a lot it's cinched in my waist way too much these are a antique store find so you know whoever's antique waist these once belonged to it was a uh, waist on thin as in maybe wearing a corset or a waist trainer okay but if you have a tiny waist and you want to buy these pants I'll list them they're a beautiful baby pink color and they have pleats so Gorgina <sighs> sorry y'all my battery died so I don't know if the angle changed at all but let's continue lesson number 14 is when working towards self-growth speak in terms like the person I'm becoming is slash can x y and z because then you're manifesting the person that you're becoming so let me give you an example the person I'm becoming is super strong or the person I'm becoming can bench press a lot more weight than I currently am. And I just think that that's really great to think about for yourselves when you have a goal or a trait that you want. It just reframes your mind. I'm grabbing another pair of pants to try on down here, but we got another lesson to discuss while I try them on. Don't complain about problems you're not doing anything to fix. I actually think that I might have put this in a previous lessons learned video. This is just one of my favorite lessons ever because it seriously can relate to so many different aspects. Like if you're sick for a really long time and you're complaining to everybody about how sick you feel, but you never go to the doctor. Why are you complaining about how sick you feel? You haven't done anything about it. You haven't done anything to get to the bottom of it. Or another classic example of people who always complain about their partner, but they refuse to get out of that relationship. They're just constantly, constantly complaining about them to everybody. I'm not really interested in hearing about this person anymore because you know what I'm going to say, which is you need to leave this relationship. You're not doing that. So in the meantime, I got to put the brakes on that. I really feel like I've shared this lesson before, but it's always hitting. Anyways, these pants are like ideally pretty cute, right? I love them, they're a mustard moment, but I do have another pair of yellow pants in here that do the same thing. And the reason that these are in here is because of this. Floods, 
<laughs> Whoopsies. Who would have expected that, huh? I mean, I'm short, but I'm not this short. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I wear these, I'm like, there's a breeze on my ankles. <laughs> so I think I gotta give these to a shorter person. Lesson number 16 is really kind of more of a personal opinion. One of the best things a person can be is a good storyteller. It'll get you so far at dinner parties, at work, in really just most social scenarios, but it's just such a likable quality to me. Like, somebody could tell a story about something so stupid and meaningless, but if you tell it in the right way, you have captivated me. I'm there. I'm wondering what happens next, and I live for that thrill, and I just think it's such an admirable quality, and one of my favorite things about myself as well. Like, I know how to tell a good story, and sometimes they're long stories, but they're a story, okay? I just love that, and I admire it in everybody else, too. These godforsaken pants. Let's try them on. Lindsay gave me these, and they used to fit, but I've been afraid to try them on since. Number 17 is a lesson that I learned from another one of my favorite podcasts, which is Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard and Monica Padman. And a lesson they shared recently is social comparison isn't always negative. It can be aspirational or inspirational. I really wanted to mention that because in the past, in videos, and this kind of more related to body confidence when I would share this lesson, but I would always say things like, comparison is the death of confidence. But honestly, if you're comparing yourself to somebody in a social sense, that's not a bad thing to do. I know that these pants aren't even gonna zip. Do you see this right now? <laughs> Hold on, can I do it? Ah, I did it, but I have to keep my arms like this and then they kind of don't really hurt that bad. But if I go down here and I relax, oh, God forbid I relax. I don't know how these ever fit me. Not trying to think too hard about it when it comes to comparison and body type. But honestly and truly, I believe that a lot of the social comparisons that I make in my life are all for the best. It's not a bad thing. Got caught on my happy trail there. Anyway, I gotta get rid of these pants. They're super cute 70s bright floral pants. I hope somebody enjoys them. The rest of these pants, honestly, I'm keeping. <laughs> Cause some of them are Lindsay's and I know she'll want them back. And then some of them are new. And then the other ones are just really loved. Actually, I might get rid of these. I pretty much never wear these and I've had them for so long. Let's try them on and talk about lesson number 18. This lesson and a couple of the following ones have been lessons that like the previous one, I've kind of extrapolated from listening to episodes of Armchair Expert. It's just such a good show. I learn so much much about humans from listening to it. And I learn a lot about myself. So this next lesson is always try to poke holes in your story. And furthermore, keep in mind that other people's stories have holes too. So let me give you an example. Finley used to say, I just have a really bad memory. So I would help him to remember things. That's kind of why I make a lot of the memory books that I make is so that he'll remember the little things in the days. But he honestly has a really great memory now. And it doesn't really matter how he got there, but he got there. So he doesn't really fit in the box anymore of being bad at remembering things. So if I say things like, oh yeah, Finley just has a horrible memory. Like that could be an offensive thing for him to hear when he's like, I've overcome that, okay? I'm actively trying to remember things better. So not only does this lesson kind of obtain to you in your own labels or things that you've adopted, your belief system by yourself, but also your belief systems about other people. So just keep it in mind. Anyways, these pants, I think I'm gonna get rid of them. I thrifted these back in the day. I think, God, I don't remember. I've had them for so long. So long, in fact, that I actually, I'm pretty sure they have a patch in the crotch, but don't worry, I patched it well. So if you do get these off my deep pop, just know no holes are gonna be popping through. I just wore them so much that like in the butt, there was some kind of fading away and I put a little gray bandana patch in there. So now, even if they were to wear away more, you would have that back layer. <laughs> and I think I'm done with this rack over here. So let me readjust the frame. Okay, I'm over here in my cute little dress. I'm keeping this, by the way. I just needed to throw on a dress so I can rip it on and off and try on these other dresses if I need to get rid of them. Actually, apart from just dresses, I also have some overalls and jumpsuits back here as well. So we're gonna look at all of this. Wow, we discussed lesson number 19, which is learn to do things a few different ways. For me, <laughs> when I'm learning a new recipe or something like that, I can 
can visit the recipe book and try it exactly by the book, or I can kind of add in a little bit of my own, sprinkle my own spice, or I can completely rewrite the entire thing and just make my own recipe or learn a new one from scratch. You know, you can learn how to do things many different ways, and it's not just one way that you have to stick to. And I'm a pretty regimented person, especially when it comes to the kitchen, so I really need this lesson because I just need to remember that I don't always have to do things by the book and I'm getting a lot better at just loosening my reins a little bit. Also I got an Apple Watch, forgot to say that at the beginning of this. And it's kind of a major slay in my life so I just wanted to, you know, hit my stand goal for the day so I didn't take it off for this video. Anyway, let's see what we can get rid of in here. I'm thinking we'll get rid of these overalls or I'll at least try them on. I really rarely wear these. I wore them once last year, I remember the outfit. But the thing is that I'm always just scared to wear them because they're white, even though they're patterned. I'm just generally pretty scared to wear them. And then also when I wear white, I really think it washes me out. While I'm putting these on, let's talk about lesson number 20, which is when you give advice, it's best to just share your own experience and somebody can take whatever they want from that versus just telling somebody what to do. I feel like I'm stubborn and when I'm talking to somebody and seeking advice out, I want them just to genuinely tell me their story and an experience that they've had similar if they've had one. And if they just tell me exactly what to do or what they would do in that situation, I'm like, okay, well that's you, that's not me, so whatever. I'm very specific when it comes to advice giving and taking. I would even say this is probably the most important for people who are in bad relationships, is just to talk about a bad relationship that you were in in the past and how you kind of got out of that rather than being like, damn, you gotta break up with that person. They are just terrible to you. That's not gonna help somebody come to terms with that. You sharing your experience about how you are no longer in that relationship, that will help somebody. That's probably the best example I can give. Anyway, what do we think about these overalls? Keep or delete. I just really think that they wash me out. Like when I come up here and I'm talking to you guys and it's all white, I don't like how I look. So one of you can have these instead. Here we have something else that I altered to fit me, but I never really wear it because it's kind of painful. And it's just because of these damn spaghetti straps, dude. Well, first of all, I made it a corset back so that it would be more fitting to my frame because it's not my size. But I wore this over Christmas a couple years ago and I've literally not worn it since. So let's try it on, see how it looks while we talk about lesson number 21, which is when it comes to making friends, just say yes to all plans. Here in Virginia, I've just been saying yes to any social scenario because I'm like, what the freak is the worst that could happen? Me going and not having that great of a time? Okay, <laughs> say less. Guys, if you could see my ass from the back right now, if you could see it from the front until you see it from the back, 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 back. I'm not gonna show you from the back because it's just my whole crack, but I literally cannot even get this over my ass right now. And that's how you know the donk is donking back there, dude. I don't think I can get this over my ass, my dumpity. I gotta give this to somebody with a flatter ass than me, all right? So this is a really good jumpsuit though. It's from Reformation altered by me to be less tight fitting in the top and it's super cute. Wish I could model it for you, but it's not getting over that booty. But for another example on the social scenario, so last night I actually said no to some plans and I sent an excuse to my friend about how I had to prepare to film this video and I was stressed about it because a lot of the time I don't write a lot of these lessons until days leading up to the video. Spoiler! Some of them I write throughout the year, but for the most part it takes me couple days leading up to this. Anyway, so I was telling her that and then I got a cavity filled yesterday and Finley wasn't feeling very well so he bailed on the plans and I would have had to go alone and so I sent her this whole lengthy thing about how I couldn't go but after I worked out and showered and had that time to myself, it just put it in perspective like, bitch, why are you saying no to this? At the end of the day, I just didn't care actually about any of my excuses. I understand if you need to excuse yourself from a social scenario, that's totally fine, but for myself, in my heart, I truly just felt like I just need to go and do this. I'm gonna have so much fun. And I did. And going to a social plan like that, it's like you have closer relationships with the people who you've been introduced to because you're seeing them more and you're making these core memories. It's like, just fucking do it, okay? I think I tried this on in my last closet clean out and I shared how I thought that this was a little bit too body con for me. And I think I feel the same way right now. I just don't know if it's actually a good look. The arms are fine, at least. The breasts. It's 
another feet. Okay, so around the tummy area is really my main area of concern because my band, like I said, cuts right here. So this is the dress when I have this period thong on, and then this is the dress with no undies. Honestly, same situation. I just feel like I cannot wear dresses like this anymore without only seeing my belly in them. And like, that's fine. I love my cute little belly. I love my little booty. I love what this dress does for me in some areas. This is just my thing with clothes like this. Like if I'm gonna wear this out in the entire time, I'm only thinking about how my stomach looks. This isn't a good piece of clothing for me to wear out because it makes me self-conscious. And quite frankly, I just went and looked at myself in the mirror in this dress and I said, you slain in some areas, but you don't feel like a slay. And that's the most important part. Lesson number 22 is having contradictions in your sustainability is better than having no sustainability practices at all. So for example, like since moving here, I've been purchasing more plastic, but I've also been eating out so much less. So it's kind of like there's a give and take, right? I also have a friend who does doesn't recycle, but she uses a menstrual cup. So she's limiting her period waste, you know what I mean? And just because we do the one thing that's like not so great, we're also doing another thing which is great and we are making steps. So I think it's really easy in the sustainability world to feel like you have to adhere to so many rules and follow them to a T. And I've been super strict with my sustainability in the past and I just felt like that wasn't sustainable, like for a lifestyle, for longevity for me. And really since moving and having a different grocery store with less bulk options close by, I just feel like I've been making trade-ups in my life and that's okay. I don't need to like judge myself and be like, you're a bad environmentalist. Okay, we got another white moment. This is actually my mom's dress that she gave me and I wore it in Jamaica and then I tried to wear it another time and it just really didn't work out for me in a flattering way. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to make it work out now, but if it doesn't, then maybe one of you can make it work differently. But I'll show you what the issue is. This is not supposed to be how it is. It's supposed to fit up here. The ties back here need to be tied into this, or this strap in itself needs to be tied in a knot so it stays. I don't know, it's just really hard for me to tie to fit my body, and like it's white and a little bit see-through. It's a really good beach moment. It could be showing even more back, you know, having way more open back, which could be a moment too. But I just feel like I haven't really figured this dress out and it kind of stresses me out to own it. So maybe one of you could just have a better time with this. I'm not sure I understand. Shut up, Siri. This was a hand-me-down from my mom, by the way, not a gift. But again, I've said this in past clothing cleanouts. Like, if you give me a clothing gift and I end up rehoming it later, I don't think that that's a bad or unethical thing to do. If I gave somebody a clothing gift and they rehomed it later, I'll be like, yeah, that's the natural cycle of clothes, is that they need to find a home that's gonna actually wear them and love them, rather than staying in your closet just because I gave it to you. So hopefully this prana dress finds its way into your home some way somehow. I'm getting rid of so much, I'm so proud of myself. This other dress is also from my mom and I wore it to a wedding and it was pretty cute, pretty slay. But when I wore it, I'll just never unhear this. Lindsay was like, you really want that dress? Cause my mom like at the beginning of the wedding had brought these dresses for us and I was like, ooh, this one's cute, I'm gonna wear it. And Lindsay was just like, I don't like that one. And I wore it to the wedding and I just could only hear her in my head being like, I don't like that one. But also at the same time, when I actually wore it, I realized that, again, the fucking spaghetti straps. I cannot wear spaghetti straps without having like a thick bra underneath because it just cuts into my skin. Like the girls are not built for spaghetti straps. But this is a really pretty dress. I believe it's from Anthropology, and it's just so nice, multicolored, patterned, beautiful little moment. I'm just gonna list these two and then give the moolah to my mom as she did purchase these, you know, and she thought that they would have a longer life in my closet, but I only got like one wear out of both. Honestly, y'all, I think it's time to put my pants back on because I don't think I want to get rid of much else, but I do want to share these last few lessons with you. So lesson number 23 is for me in regards to having a diet plan. Having a routine is better than having restrictions. I have a routine with my 
food, especially throughout my like workouts in the week. I will wake up and have just black coffee, go to the gym, immediately after have a Lara bar on my way home. When I get home, I'll have a protein smoothie. As I shower and kind of digest that pretty quickly, then I'm immediately hungry for a bigger lunch. And then I'll have a breakfast sandwich with egg, beyond breakfast sausage, some greens, you know, some delicious goat cheese, whatever. And then later in the day, I'll have another snack. And then maybe I'll have a matcha and then I'll make a dinner or I'll have leftovers from the night before. Like I'm very routine in that. But if I have something that comes up throughout that, that throws a wrench into my routine of eating, I'm fine with that. I'm not restrictive. I'm not like, no, I won't get ice cream with you. No, I won't have a dinner out. I'm not restrictive with my drinking. I don't withhold certain things throughout the week as like a little carrot on the weekend for me to have, you know, like not drink throughout the week and then just drink on the weekend because that will lead to overconsumption, at least for me. Um, so I just think that that's more sustainable for me, like kind of following a routine, but not being super restrictive. I'm actually gonna go through my scarves and sarongs and things while I talk about these last three lessons, but this one is so huge for me. Don't stress so much about the event that you ruin the joy of the actual event. Oh my god, I am such a type of person. If I'm hosting, like I'm having a party this weekend, right? I'm really focusing right now. This is the reason I wrote this lesson down. Don't stress about this. This is a birthday party. It's going to be freaking fun. We're having a bounce house. It's gonna be totally wicked, okay? But when I've hosted in the past, I have this like weird checklist in my head that I need to fulfill. I provide Finley a checklist as well and I like hover over him while he does it like a fucking crazy person and I get so stressed right until the first person walks in the door and then I'm like, okay, I'm fine. But having all of those feelings really ruins the aspects of the event, like the lead up to it and the getting ready that are actually fun. So I'm really not trying to do that anymore. Anyway, I think I'm gonna get rid of this orange scarf. I just never wear that color but it's very gorgeous and sentimental as well because it was given to me by a friend when I went to India. And I also think I'm gonna get rid of this wool scarf. I know that we're now in spring in the US, but I did not wear that once <laughs> this past fall and winter. So I think it's time to rehome it. Lesson number 25 is actually a tiny Buddha quote that I saw on Instagram today and it was hitting so hard and really resonated with me. True friends aren't the ones who make your problems disappear. They're the ones who won't disappear when you're facing problems. I really was thinking about this when I saw it because my best friend Maddie just came into town to visit and I was just like venting so much and catching her up on all of these things that had happened, my woes of the past few months and just like venting going on. And at one point I like said to her like, I'm sorry, I just feel like I'm sharing so much and just like kind of being negative. And she was like, no, it's fine. Like I want to hear about this stuff. Like I want to hear you vent. I want to hear the updates about what's been good and what's been bad. Like that's why we have friends, right? So your true friends are the ones who are like down to hear about those times. And another example is like on my Cabo trip with Nevin, I was telling her a bunch of stories that I thought I had told her, but I hadn't. And I was like, I can't believe I haven't told you this. Like, sorry if I'm oversharing. And she literally said, I don't think that we have the type of relationship where you can overshare with me. I just don't think that we have that kind of a dynamic. And I was like, that's good to know. So obviously I do do those check-ins where it's like, is this too much? Am I like dumping on you? I don't wanna like do that, like a trauma dump situation, checking in with them. But a lot of the time I just get reassurance that like I'm totally fine and that's what friends are for. And then my last lesson, number 26, is one of my favorite lessons right now. Just like all of these, I feel like I've said that about a lot of them. Just give the compliment. I love of giving compliments so much. And I've just had so many good stranger interactions lately just because I've complimented people. I'll shout at people, not in a weird way, but I'll be like, I love your pants, you know? Not in a cat collie way, it's just like a genuine, love that for you, your jacket's so cool. You know, if they're too far from me, I'll do that. Cool shoes, those shoes are pimping. I'll just express whatever needs to be expressed because hey, why the hell not? You know what I mean? Like, again, what do you have to lose? It's just like what I said earlier with the social situations. Like, if you want to have more good energy in your life and be a more social person and attract people and have more friends, like, you just need to be able to do stuff like that and not just exist in this socially anxious and doubtful bubble where you're like, I can't talk to anybody. Ah, my life is so hard. It's like, just put yourself out there and try to start giving compliments. Give one compliment this week. That is 
as your homework, okay, to a stranger. It'll probably make their week, make your day better. Sometimes it leads to a better interaction with them or a better conversation afterwards, and I just recommend. Anyways, this was a long ass video, but you wanna see what I'm giving away? Cause it's a lot. I have collected this whole pile of clothes to give away right here. So I'm gonna be listing these over the next coming weeks on my Depop, which is just at Megan Hughes now. It used to be Megan underscore Hughes. It is not that anymore, okay? Cause I got the regular username. So there you go. And this is what I've been reading off of throughout this video. Just a casual iPhone tripod. And maybe in another video we'll get rid of some of these shoes or something like that or some of this other stuff that's covering the bed. But for now, this is what we're working with. All right, guys, I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this closet clean out slash 26 lessons I've learned at 26. I hope it helped you in some way, inspired you to clean out your closet or gave you some life advice or just a listening ear or some helpful tidbits. I don't know. I hope you felt understood in some way throughout watching this. And I just love you so much. And I'm really, really happy Happy to be 26. I just feel like I'm at a great place in life right now and you guys are a significant part of that so thank you for watching me and receiving me and just listening to all of my silly little lessons. This is my seventh lessons learned video so just thanks for listening to me blab all these years. Love ya! I'll talk to you in the next one and when I'm not on here you can find me on Twitch or on Patreon and I will link my Depop down below so you can just have a quick link there follow me on there and I'll probably be sharing on Instagram too when I'm actually listing all the clothes because like I said this is going up on my birthday so happy birthday to me and thank you in advance for the birthday wishes talk to you soon okay stay smiling bye y'all